Praise the Lord. What a, what a joy it is for me to be here and in the first service and perhaps in this service. And uh, I know there are people who have been in this church since 1982. And so that's uh, almost 40 years that people have been here. And I, I think it's a great testimony that people have been walking faithfully with the Lord, serving and being part of a church for that length of time. Con How many of you here have been here for over 30 years? Can I see your hand? See, I got a, I got a hand. Can I? I see another hand over there. So there's a few in this service, and uh, I'm just glad to be here with all of you. And we're just uh, your new friends. We haven't met yet, but I'm Howard. Nice to meet you. Praise God. I'm glad to be here this morning. Um, how many of you have had a good year the last year? <laughs> With all the COVID and everything, uh, it's been quite a challenging year. I don't know about you, but for me, uh, in about 2005, I had some open heart surgery that um, was uh, kind, of, kind of, so I have an underlying heart condition, let's say that. And so when this COVID thing hit, uh, my wife, uh, Gail, uh, we've been married, that's uh, seven years. We had our anniversary recently, praise God. And... Um, so she put me in deep quarantine. She said, Howard, I want you to last. I want you to last. I want to last. Praise God. So she said, take a seat on the couch. And she was bringing me food. I said, can I have an ice cream sundae? She'd bring me an ice cream sundae. Oh, Gail, I think I need a pedicure. That nail's getting a little long. And she was giving me pedicure. So part of this is uh, half true. <laughs> so, uh, but we've been, uh, we made it through this COVID thing. But I got to tell you what, um, it's, I think for our country, for churches, it's been difficult uh, wearing the masks, um, trying to avoid getting sick, I guess you could put it. And then on top of that, we had this contentious election season. I'm not going to go political or anything like that, but I know the, the election and all that was contentious, even in the body of Christ. There was a lot of contention, different opinions about things. And then we had uh, the, the thing with the, the racial, all the racial thing, and whether we're black, Asians, whatever. whatever. We, we have, we have uh, uh, many issues going on. And at times it felt like... Uh, Boy, wh where's our country's in turmoil? Things are in turmoil. A lot of stuff going on. And I don't know, it affected my spirit. Did it affect your, if anyone here, would you say that you had a, somewhat of a difficult year? How many, would, give me your hand. Let me see your hand. I, I, first service, like 90% of the people said it had been somewhat difficult uh, to negotiate this last year. And during this, I took some time. I, I always spend time with the Lord in prayer every day. And I read my Bible every day. It's a suggestion I give to all of you because reading the Bible is how you get to know God better. You know how he deals with things. You know God's ways, and you learn more about Jesus. You learn more about the Father, and you learn more about the Holy Spirit. And I could take you back to many years when I first got, came to the Lord. I was 30 years old. I grew up in Sunday school and all, but as a teenager got away, and age 30, I gave my heart to Jesus Christ, and I made a commitment to follow the Lord all the days of my life, and God came back into my life at that time. But when I came to gave my heart to the Lord was one thing, but getting to know God deeper and better was a process. And you can see how old I am now. I I'm, may, may or may not tell you how old I am, but I'm here today, praise God, and I, I'm doing well, praise the Lord. And I've had ups and downs through my life, tragedies and different things before me, had financial difficulties, haven't always gotten things right, exactly right. I've made some mistakes. Am I, am I in the right house this morning? Am I among the right people? Uh, sometimes I, I've even had to kick myself for what I did wrong. And as St. Paul said, the things I know I should do, I don't do. And the things I know I shouldn't do, I end up doing Oh, What a miserable person that I am. But here I am, praise God. And... Uh, I made a commitment over 40 years ago to bring God into my life and to live with God and to find out what his plan was for me at any certain point in my life and then try to live that plan. I've tried to be obedient to the Lord. And, and you know, it's been working out, i got to tell you, it's been working out pretty well. 
And so even through this COVID, no matter what's been going on, I said, God's still on the throne. Jesus is still alive. The Holy Spirit is still around. I think no matter what happens, we're going to be all right. Praise God. In fact, I'll go make it personal. No matter what happens, I'm going to be all right. Praise God. And I want to encourage you this morning, brothers and sisters, to take a, a good look at what your perspective is. Now, if you are, you're, you're go up and down with your problems, I understand problems. I understand this uh, up and down thing. But I'll tell you what, even in the valley, you sang it this morning. said, where do I get my victory? When I'm in the valley, he's with me. Uh, when my enemies are surrounding me, he's with me. And so a perspective uh, is to, I'm going to thank and praise God no matter what's going on in my life because that's how I'm going to get the victory, praise the Lord. I'm going to get the victory. I'm going to get the victory. I'm going to get the victory. You're going to get the victory. You're going to get the victory by looking to the Lord and praising the Lord no matter what you're or circumstances might be, and I'm going to encourage you to have a perspective that includes God in your life all the time. You'll never go wrong walking with the Lord, and the closer you walk with the Lord, I believe the better your life will be. Yes, praise God. I want to tell you what, I, I had a, a 44 years of a wonderful marriage to one woman. She passed away. And I'm going to share this with you. Before she passed away, two weeks before she died, she looked at me, had the Holy Spirit in her, and she said, Howard, I'm, going to, I'm not going to make it out of this illness. But when I'm gone, you're going to meet somebody, and you're going to fall in love, and you're going to get married again. And in less than a year, I met Gail. And I fell in love again. Can you imagine being 70 years old and dating somebody new and then getting married? And this marriage is, I got to tell you what, it is fantastic. In fact, it's so good. I'm praying right now that we're going to have a 50th wedding anniversary. So I'm going to have to live to be over 100 for that to come to pass. But see, that's my perspective on life. What's yours? Moses was called into the ministry when he was 80. God called him to lead the people out. I'm not that old yet, so I'm just getting started in the ministry. Praise God. Whatever we did in the past, God still has plans for me. Now, I retired from full-time ministry, but I couldn't tell you what's happened with Gail and I is we are, we are anybody ever hear of the Brady Bunch? Uh, I know it's a long time ago. It was a TV show when I was young. But the Brady Bunch was uh, two people got together, and, they got, and they're, they're combined family. So Gail and I, between us now, check this out. We have seven children. Sometimes they get an ooh. Sometimes they get a ooh. Sometimes they go, oh, wow. But we have seven children, and we have 14 grandchildren. Yeah. Huh? Four daughters-in-law. Let's add the daughters-in-law in there, yeah? We have four daughters-in-law, and then uh, we have a, everything from a, about a 20-year-old a kid down to a three-month-old little girl up in New Hampshire whose name is Delilah. She's three months old. So Delilah is growing up. She's so beautiful, I got to tell you. And if there are any Samsons that were born recently, they better watch out for her because she's on her way up, praise God. So... That's just a little bit about us. And, yes, we came here in uh, 1982. Just God spoke to us, said, go start a church. We didn't know what the heck we were doing, except we knew that we wanted to share the love of Jesus, and we gave the church the name Cornerstone Church because you can build a life on Jesus Christ. In fact, the Bible says he is the cornerstone. So I want to talk to you today about perspective. I want to talk to you about what is your viewpoint about life? How do you see God? How do you see yourself in relationship to God? Perspective is everything, somebody said. What your perspective is influences who you are, how you live, how you live out things, how you handle things, how you go through things. It all has to do with your mindset and your perspective on things. In fact, uh, somebody, a, a wonderful Bible teacher, said that what we perceive is what we actually believe. 
If I believe that God is a God of miracles, and I say, I think God can do anything. That's my perception. But you may say, I don't think God can do is doing miracles anymore. I haven't seen this. I haven't. And some people get very nice. Well, that's your life. My life is full of miracles. My life is full of wonderful experiences. My wife is full of uh, healings and, and, and the touches of God and getting through situation and going through financial difficulties and, and coming out the other side well off, praise God. My, my, my experience is I lose one wife. I get a, a, a beautiful wife uh, uh, now to share the rest of my life with, praise God. So uh, your perspective is the way you see life. I'm not kidding when I say I, I've been declaring I'm going to live till I'm 120 years old. So you know what that means? What this COVID thing says, I got so many years to go. I'm going to get through this thing. I got a lot of living still to do. And I might have retired from full-time ministry, but I still get out preaching and ministering to people and talking to people. I actually have a group of pastors, about 20 pastors, that I meet with every week encouraging other pastors in their walk with the Lord. And one of the things I tell the pastors, they said, I'm so discouraged with my church. I said, I've been there. I've done that. Praise God. Look to the Lord. He's going to get you through. And I can honestly tell you, if you're sitting here today and you've got a whole world of difficulties and you don't see your way out of it, God's got a way for you. Praise God. He can get you through your difficulties no matter what comes your way. Can somebody say amen to that? I want to know I'm in the right house today. Hallelujah. So this verse, this uh, quote that perspective is everything came from Johnny Erickson Tata. Anyone ever heard of her? Johnny. She, this is a girl who at age 17 was a terrific athlete, dove in a lake and broke her neck and was declared a paraplegic. Nothing moves from the neck down. Johnny was a Christian girl, but with that tragedy, she got depressed she got angry. She pushed her faith to the side. She got very discouraged, was even suicidal at one point. And somehow in the middle, though, she, she began to say, wait a minute. She could do, still talk. She's still beautiful to look at. And she said, maybe God has a plan for me. And maybe I don't like what's happened to me. Maybe I don't like what I, has occurred in my life. But if God's got a plan for me, let me find out what that plan is and let me start living it. So you know what Johnny did? She couldn't move her arms or her legs or her hands or her feet. She took a pen and put it in her mouth and using that would write on the paper. And she began to write songs and write letters and write testimonies about the goodness of God. Then she exchanged the pen for a paintbrush and put an easel in front of her. And she could dip the brush in the paint, and she began to paint. And I, let me just tell you something. What Johnny did, because she changed her perspective from suicidal, discouraged, depressed, and angry, she turned it as, I'm going to live my life for Jesus Christ. I'm going to live my life for God. So you know where she went from there? She went nowhere but up. Listen to this. I know. She, Johnny embarrasses me. Why? She has recorded three record albums that have sold, and you can buy her written the songs and recorded three record of gospel songs. Johnny has a radio program today. Over 1,200 stations around the world air it, and she shares words of encouragement with people, and she's been on the radio for like 40 years. Johnny paints paintings from which they make Christmas cards, Rep reproducible prints that you can buy in Christian stores and everything. And uh, she makes a lot of money from her Christmas cards. You can buy, find them in, in all the kinds of all occasion cards that she has painted with her mouth. Johnny has started a ministry for the Wounded Warriors Project, guys coming back, and gals wounded in Afghanistan or Iraq or those kind of places, started a ministry to encourage them, even if they're disabled, that they have a life, praise God. And she has seminars where she encourages them. In fact, more than that, she has a week-long week summer camp where all these wounded people come in, and she speaks to them and has trained counselors to encourage them that they can still live a productive and fruitful life. Can you you say amen to that. I, I, I think it's just wonderful. I, it embarrasses me that I haven't done more with my life when I see Johnny and what she's done. Why? Because she has the right perspective. 
Now, here's what I'm going to just share, three words of advice to you today. Number one, God is for you. Would you turn to your neighbor, just look at him and say, God is for you. Whether you believe it or not, I'm not asking you to believe. Just say, God is for you. Now, we have an enemy called Satan, called a devil. And just as much as there is a God, the devil doesn't want you to believe in God. His job is to lie and to kill and destroy. He wants to destroy you, wants to bring you down, wants to discourage you, defeat you, and depress you. So the devil will tell you, God doesn't care about you. See that woman over there, she got healed and you didn't. God doesn't love you. God doesn't care about you. He lies all the time. And when you're going through a really bad problem, say, where's God? <laughs> where's God? You believe in God. You go to that church over there. <laughs> and where's God now? Look at, look at, you look at, you're, you're really suffering now. That's the voice of the devil. And I'm trying to encourage you today to have the right perspective, which is God is for you. I'm going to say it again. Where are I? Am I moving around too much for the camera? I don't know. I'm giving the cameraman a workout today. Okay. God is for you, sir. Way in the back. God is for you. God is for you. God is for you. I know I'm pointing. I'm, I'm, God's for me, too. Praise God. But God is for us. Praise God. And we need to really have it. And, and so I looked up in the dictionary this word for. The Lord just dropped this little word into my mind coming out of COVID, and he still shared these things with me. He said, God's for you. So I looked up the word for in the dictionary. Now, here I am. I'm a college graduate and everything. And imagine me looking up the word F-O-R in the dictionary to see the meaning of it. But I said, I really want to get some depth of it. To be for means what's the purpose of something? For example, those seats you're in, their purpose is for you to be able to sit down and be comfortable. If I had a cup of coffee, the purpose of the cup is to hold the coffee. That's what it's there for. So when I say that God is for you, that's a big statement. Because what I'm actually saying, the purpose of God in revealing himself to us is to show us that he's on our side, that he's for us. God is for you. He is not against you. God is for you. He hasn't forgotten you. God has a purpose for you. You say, well, I, I had a guy come to my church one time, and he said, I don't even know what I'm doing on planet Earth. I think God made a mistake when he made me. I don't think God makes any mistakes. Not one of you is a mistake. Not one of you is an accident. You are all made in the image of God, and God is for you. Praise God. And it's his purpose, one of God's purpose for being is to be for humanity, be to be for human beings. And if you start believing that, it'll change your whole perspective on life, that God is on your side. Here's what the psalmist said, Psalm 126, verse 3. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Now, I'm going to ask you a question, a little survey question here this morning. How many of you honestly can say that God has done, because of your faith and your trust in him, you will say that God has done something great in your life? Can I see your hand? That at one point or another, God has maybe has been a healing. Maybe he got you through a finance. Look at the hands. Look at the hands. Praise God. I think I'm preaching the truth here. Wouldn't you think that God has, can we give the Lord a hand this morning and say, thank you, Lord, for all the good things you've done for me. Praise God. Hallelujah. I had a fella, one of the ushers here today, came up to me before the service, and he introduced himself to me. He said, Pastor Howard, just before I retired, to remember, I came to your church over in Bristol and where we had healing rooms. He came to one of the healing rooms, and he had cancer. The fellow people from our church, the lay people from our church, laid hands on him and prayed for him. He went back to the doctor. They said they couldn't find the cancer, and he's still cancer-free today. There's somebody who said, God's done great things for me, Pastor. Hallelujah. I got to score some points now, but one of the greatest things God ever did was brought this woman into my life. And I said, he's really on my side. He's really for me. Hallelujah. So, well, you know, God has done great things for us. And here's the verse. 
in the Bible, John 3, 16. Most of you, many of you know this verse. And you, we generally say God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. But if you look in your Bible at that verse, it says, for God so loved the world. For means there was a purpose in God sending Jesus. And the purpose was to give you and me eternal life, to have you and me have our sins forgiven so we could bury our mistakes of the past in the blood of Jesus Christ shed on Calvary's cross. And we could live our future in freedom of knowing that God loves us and God is for us. Why? Because the verse said, God so loved you and me that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you and me, that you and me are going to see each other in heaven and live forever in the presence of the Lord. How many of you believe that this morning? Do you believe you're going to heaven? I believe it. It's a certainty. I believe I'm going to heaven, and I believe that God is on my side. Hallelujah. And then the verse, oh, what a powerful verse. I, I just, that is, is in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, and I'm going to read this verse. It says this. Listen to me. In all things, say with me, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. In all things, I said not some, a few, but in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. I'm going through COVID. I'm quarantined. I can't go here and there. I got to wear an uncomfortable mask. And trying to, you know, all of this stuff. And, uh, uh, and, and through it all, I knew that it was going to work for my good. I got a lot of energy, and when I retired, it was hard on me. You're going to say, oh, it's hard to retire. But I like to, I just, my wife worries about me sometimes because I'm always active doing something or other, you know. I'll go dig a hole in the yard if I have nothing else to do. And she said, where are you going? I said, maybe to China. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, but I got that kind of energy, so it's hard to retire. But this this COVID thing was forced me to kind of relax and be cool and not feel like I had to run, uh, get up and be doing something all the time. And it really helped me retire. Now, that's the good it's done for me. You say, well, I just wish I could retire and, and be like you, Pastor Howard. But I'm telling you, that's just a problem for me. It may not be a problem for anybody else. But God works for the good of everyone who loves him. Love the Lord. Believe the God. Have faith in God. Trust in him. He's working for your good all the time. Hallelujah. 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 Why would I want to live to be under? To, so I, had something, I don't want to live in this world anymore, this crummy world. I don't want to live in it anymore. Oh, no, that's not my. I want to live to be 120. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying myself. I get to meet all of you folks. Praise God. What a wonderful world this is. Hallelujah. I got a couple young ladies down here. They're smiling at me ever since I came up here. I don't know what I did. Maybe it's my good looks. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I look silly to them or something. I don't know. But they're having a good time, and I'm happy with that. Praise God. Okay. So let's say God is for us. Okay. God is. We're all going to say it, okay? I'll, okay, so let's say God is for us. All right. Second thing I want to say is God is with us. He's not only for us, but he's with us. To be with somebody means they accompany them. They're alongside of them. I am with my wife today. I'm with you today. You are with me today. I'm with old friends and new friends today. So he's with us. St. Paul said to philosophers on a mountaintop in Greece, and they were philosophizing about the world and everything and talking about whether there's a God and all this stuff. He says, wait a minute. And I'm paraphrasing my Bible from the book of Acts. He says, here you are having this big discussion. Look at the sky. Look at the planet. Look at the trees. Look at the ocean. Look at the fish, you know, the fish and, the, and the birds. And look at all the beautiful things. And hey, you know, and don't you see that God has done all of this, created all this, so that we would seek him and reach out to him and find him? 
And this is in Acts 17, 27. It says, though he is not very far from any one of us. He's not far. And Paul said elsewhere, he says, he's near to you, nearer than you know. He's with you. In the song we sang, in the valley of the shadow of death, he's with us. I can go to the far reaches of the world. He's with me. I can go to Africa. He's with me. I can go to Hartford. He's with me. I can come to Cheshire. He's with me. I can go up to the Litchfield Hills. He's with me. I can go on vacation. He's with me. I can go to Cornerstone. He's with me. I can go to another church. He's with me. Praise God. Wherever I go, because I believe this, God is with me. He accompanies on the, me on the journey. He never leaves me alone, and I want to say this. He's not very far from any one of us. That includes you, brothers and sisters. He's not very far from you. The devil will try to tell you he's not there. He's far away. He's left you. Oh, but I'm telling you today, God is right here. He's very near, and he's ready to touch your life. He's ready to heal you, to help you, to encourage you, and to lead you on your way through the rest of your life. Hallelujah. In fact, some of uh, Abraham's enemies in the Old Testament, and I have Genesis 21, 22. They came up, these army arrayed against Abraham, came and the commander of the army said to Abraham, God is with you in everything you do. We don't want to fight you. We don't want to confront you because we're afraid of you because we see that God is with you. What a testimony. I want that to be said of me. Pastor Howard, God is with you wherever you go. I would love that everybody would say that about everybody in this church. You came in the room. I felt something different. Wow, what a breath of life you are. You brought something into the room. Why? Because you brought God in with you. You can literally affect atmospheres and places because of the presence of the Lord in your life. Jacob had a dream. This is in the Old Testament. Jacob was running from his brother who had cheated out of the birthright, and he stopped at a place. He named it Bethel. He had a dream. Many of you have heard about this dream. He, he saw angels ascending and descending on that place where he had slept that night. And he saw that heaven was open, and here were angels coming down to where he was and going back up like angels on assignment. And the Lord spoke to him in a dream, and he said, I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I promise you. And when Jacob woke up from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. And I wonder how many times God has helped you in your life, and you weren't aware of it. You never gave, him pre never gave him credit for it. And, uh, folks, I, at an early age, was drafted into the Army of the United States as a young fella. I found myself, after about a year or so, uh, in Vietnam as an infantry pat pl platoon leader. I was uh, 22 years old. My first day in, in with my unit, that they assigned me, I came in by helicopter, they assigned me to my first day there. We went down the road and we got caught in the middle of an ambush. And I found bullets flying over my head, grenades going off. I could hear the enemy soldiers no further than my wife and me through the bamboo and the bushes that we were in. They were throwing grenades. They were going off. They were throwing them over too far. They were going over our head. And, and I remember being really afraid. And I got down on my face on the ground. And bullets were literally zinging inches above my head. It's my first day. I said, oh, this is going to be a long year. <laughs> At the end of that year in Vietnam, and we saw, I was ambushed, in ambushes several times. 
been shot at. I got on a plane to come home. I was not wounded. Every other officer in my battalion was wounded. I was not. And I wasn't serving the Lord in those days. I gave my heart to the Lord in, at the age of 30. And uh, about that first year, I remember I was thinking about God. And I said, wait a minute, God. What about Vietnam when I was there? And I distinctly felt God speak, not audibly, but just in my spirit. He said, I was with you, Howard. I protected you. I started bawling like a baby. I mean, I, my emotion, I'm not given to being a crybaby or anything, but I just started weeping because God was with me and I wasn't aware, it, aware of it. And that's why when I come to church now and you want to say, raise your hand and praise the Lord and sing your way to victory, I'm going to sing my way to victory. Because God's been there for me, and God's been with me even when I wasn't aware of it. And he, brothers and sisters, I tell you, by faith you praise him. By faith you believe it. And there have been times the devil's told me he's not with me. I said, get out of my face, liar. I believe that God is with me. Hallelujah. I believe that God is for me. Praise God. And I'm going to end this with this, that the disciples... We're with Jesus just before, probably the days preceding his crucifixion and resurrection. And Jesus said to them, he said, I'm going to leave this world, but I'm going to send you a comforter, somebody to, I'm going to send somebody not only to be with you, but to be in you. The Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And he said, I want God. We want to be in you. It's one thing to be for you. It's one thing to be with you, but it's another thing to be in you. And I tell the story about being in means to be incorporated right in. You put sugar in a cup of coffee, you can't get it out. You can't. It's in there. And let's say we get Jesus inside of you because you've asked him, I went to Dunkin' Donuts. A guy in front of me, he wanted six sugars in his coffee. Imagine, he wanted lots of sugar in there. Some Christians perhaps should ask for six doses of Jesus and the presence of the Holy Spirit in them. Wow. In fact, Jesus comes in, he'll make you sweet. And you may know some people who need a little of the sweetness of Jesus in them. I'd like to lead you in a prayer this morning. Because the Lord said in Revelation, he said this, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone would open the door, he said, I'll come in. I'll come in. If you open the door of your heart, you open your mind to me, I'll come in and I'm going to be with you and I'm certainly going to be for you and I'll be in you because you have invited me in. Would you bow your heads with me right now and I'm going to pray. Heavenly Father, all throughout this, this room this morning, I pray that hearts are opening up, men and women, young people. We got our issues, Lord, all of us. But I know you can come in and make a difference in our life. And I pray that you'll make a difference in every life here today. There may be some who need a healing. There may be some who need finances. There may be some who just need hope, fresh hope and fresh faith. There may be some who are discouraged who need courage. Some who've lost their love and need it recharged. Would you come in, Lord Jesus, and make a difference in every life today? Would you fill my brothers and sisters, my friends here at Cornerstone, would you fill them with your presence? They want it. I know they do. They're hungry for it, Lord. Come in, sweeten the pot. Sweeten the cup that they've been handed. 
And Lord, never leave them. You promised it. Never leave them. Never forsake them. But go with them now and every day for the rest of their life. Now, I'm going to ask you to say these words. You can say them out loud. Not necessary, but you could say them out loud. Say this with me. Dear Jesus, come into my heart today. I want you in my life. I'm asking you to come into my life. Forgive me my sins. Help me to live my life in a new way. I want to walk with you all the days of my life, Lord. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for coming in. Amen. God bless you all, folks. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Appreciate that word. Uh, if you're here today and you prayed with uh, Pastor Howard and you said, you know, you answered, you answered the door. You opened the door and you let Jesus into your life today, whether you're here in the sanctuary, whether you're watching online, we would like to know. We'd like to pray with you, pray for you, help you in your walk and relationship with God. That's why we're here. We want to help you with that. So if you took that step of faith today, would you let us know you can do that by using the communication card? Just check the box on there, giving my life to Christ today. Place that in one of the offering boxes on your way out. That would let us know. We'll reach out and help you in any way that we can. Uh, so you can walk with the Lord and grow in Him and begin to experience more of Him. If you're watching online, there's a way for you to do that on our website. Just go there, look for the connection card under connect and you can um, fill out the connection card there, and that would let us know that you're committing your life to Christ, and we want to, again, help you in whatever way we can in your relationship with Jesus. Also want to give you an opportunity to respond this morning with your giving, to worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings and uh, missionary giving. Uh, thank you so much for your faithfulness in giving. It enables us to Bring the gospel to places right here, right around Cheshire and around the world. And so thank you so much. If you're giving, there are a number of ways to do that. You can text your giving to the number on the screen. You can use our Push Pay app. You can use our website as well. There's a place to give there. Or you can use the envelope located in the back of your seat and just designate your giving there. And then place those in the offering boxes as you're leaving uh, either here at the sanctuary or in the library, there, there's places for you to place your offering and give that way today. I want to close uh, with a final word of prayer and pray over the offering, pray over you as we're sent out into the world, uh, knowing that God is for us, he's with us, and certainly wants to be in us today. And then lastly, I do want to remind you that uh, these altars are always open. We'll have some people available here to pray with you. But if you want to come and kneel, you want to kneel in your seat, you want to make an altar right where you're at and just seek God, you're free to do that today. And we want to, again, invite you to just turn this place into a place of prayer and let God do uh, his work in your heart. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you today. Thank you for your amazing love that you give so freely. Thank you for this good word. Lord. Put it deep in our hearts, Lord, so that we walk in its truth today. Lord, for those who've given their life to you, touched their life, may they experience newness today. Lord, may they know today they've been forgiven and accepted by you. Lord, we thank you for these uh, tithes and offerings. Lord, it's our delight, our joy to give to you. Use it, Lord, to spread the gospel around the world, we pray. And now, Lord, as we go... We just ask you, as we are scattered in the communities around here, Lord, that we would go with you, knowing that you are for us and knowing that you are in us as well. And we thank you for it. Lord, to you, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and dominion, power and might, now and forever. Amen and amen. Amen.
Well, God bless you. Thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week. Thank you.